Welcome to tutorial number three in this beginner Max MSP series. So in this tutorial we're going to cover the random object, auto completion, which we also talked about in the last tutorial, arguments, messages, bangs, print objects, the Max window, and Uzi. So to start, let's open a new Max MSP patcher. Bam. So let's create a random object. So if we press N, we create an object box that's empty, and we start to type random. Look at I typed RA and it already appears. So just to go over the auto completion a little bit more in depth, it's really nice because so you have text completion. What text completion does is it takes the two letters, or well, I only typed two letters. It takes the letters you typed in and then shows the potential letters that are the t potential objects that use those letters that you just typed in in that be as the first letters. Uh, then you have name matches. So notice how these are all RA then something. Name matches are, are, having, are things that have RA inside the object name. So you got store edge right there, RA right there, but meanwhile ranger patch and things of that regard. That, so name matches is right there. Then you have descriptions and tags. So then it'll show where RA appeared in a description or a tag of objects. So randomly is in this decide object. Uh, break, nope, uh, there's an RA in here somewhere. Graphically, there it is, RA right in there. So this is what the audio com auto completion does. Now, we can press the down arrow and then it will take us it will highlight each of the different objects that we have there. So when we highlight it, it shows down here the description of the object. That's very helpful. So this is the object we want. It's called gen, uh, random, and it says generate a random number. So it has some of them have these little dis, uh, short descriptions right there. But it says outputs random numbers within the range between zero and one less than the argument specified. So, but if we keep moving down, radio group. So radio group, then we have a description of that. Provides a user interface for option selection. There are two modes of operation, radio button and checkbox. So cool. Um, notice what how the name autocompletes. Also show what happens when a non-object is made. So once we want to select this object, if you press the enter key, the return key, it creates it. So now I have this object. And you know you created an actual object because the inlets and the outlets appeared. And also it is white and has the little green outline. What happens when we create a non-object? Let's call this football. Okay, so apparently football is not an object because you can see that there's no outlets, no inlets, and it's this kind of beige-ish, reddish background. So there is no object named football, but you can make it. So, so cool. We have an, a random object now. Now if we double click on random, we can start retyping and we can make it to a completely different object. We can make it to be decide and we can keep changing it into whatever we want it to be. If we have random though, once we type the name of the here, so once we uh, have the the name of the object written. Once it automatically fills it in, if you press the right arrow, then it will stick to it. Uh, it, will, it will keep all the letters. And then if you press the space bar, then we have other options here. So now it knows we've picked random as our object. Now it's showing us the potential arguments and attributes available for the object arguments, or for the object random. So arguments here, arguments are things that, an argument is something you type after the object name, which further specifies how the object functions. So we have two different arguments. Just like with the auto completion, if we press the down arrow, we can highlight these different arguments and it will describe them, which is very helpful. So we have two arguments. We have range and then we have seed. Ranges sets an initial limit to the random output. The output will always be between zero and one less than the maximum limit. If there is no argument, the limit is initially set to one. 
which causes random to output zero whenever it receives a bang. So what that means is that uh, if there is no argument, if we don't type any numbers after it, right now it has a random of one, which or a random limit of one, which means it's only going to output a zero. And I'll that might sound confusing, so I'll explain that in a second. But seed. If you're not familiar with what a seed is, this is something uh, specific to creating random numbers in computer programming. So the deal is with computers, when you're creating randomness, you have to get some sort of, uh, the way that it's, it's mostly pseudo randomness. So think of it like this, we have random digits. We have a list of random digits and we have a huge database of random digits in the computer online or, or in the computer's database when we use the random function. But it's the same static database of random numbers. So eventually you will see the same patterns of randomness again. However, these, these databases are huge. So what's a seed? A seed essentially says, take this database and start at this point. So instead of starting at seven, three, seven, three, five, four, five, blah, 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 we'll start at 11 right here. So one, one, six, nine, eight. So by specifying a seed, you are telling the randomness to start at a different point in the database that it has. So, so those are the two arguments here that we have. So for range, let's type 10. And for seed, it says for seed, a second argument is used to set seed value for the random generator. If no argument is specified, the time value will be used to initialize the seed. And I believe what that means is that it's actually the time value of how long your computer has been on. So how long since you started your computer. So that sets the seed, which is a, it's a very random number depending on how long you've had your computer on. Uh, so if we don't specify it, then that's perfectly fine. So let's press enter. So what is it saying? It was saying something about it outputs one less than the limit. Well, here's the deal is that we set it to 10. So it's going to output 10 random digits. But the thing is, is that zero is a digit. It starts at zero. So random generates a random number between zero and one less than the range specified. So since zero is our first number, then technically it only goes up to nine because you see we have 10 digits, but zero through nine. So this random object is going to output between zero and nine. And that's how random will always operate. So if you want this to output between one and 10 and not put output zero, you'll have to add one to it, but we could show that later. So right now, outputting between zero and nine. Now what? So let's say I lock my patch. What, do I press it? It doesn't do anything. How do I get the random number? It's just, it's just sitting there. So what should we do? Now to introduce the message object. This is another staple, very important object in Maximus P. So if you press N, create a new object box, then we type in message. Look at that. We have send any message. Message displays and sends any given message with the capability to handle specified arguments. So if we press enter, look at that. Creates this uh, little gray box, and that's what all messages looks like. And actually, I'm going to add something here. Press the M key to create a message box or message object. So if you, instead of having to go N message, oop, yeah, message. Uh, if you instead just press the M key, look at that, it creates it. So now a message object sends its contained information out its outlet, honestly. It sends it to objects, it sends it wherever you want. So if we write um, radical. So when we type an object, if you press enter, it closes what you're typing. It, um, but if we press enter while we're typing a message, it actually does like a return, like a normal return. So what we're gonna have to do is hold shift and then press enter. So that's a little hot, hot key, a uh, quick tip for working faster. So now we have this 
message radical. Uh, let's take this other one and let's just do groovy and shift enter. So one thing you'll notice about the message is that unlike uh, objects, the message object it keeps the same amount of inlets and outlets. So it doesn't become a different thing. The message is uh, the message object. It will, it will never grow three inlets and two outlets, um, unlike how yeah I showed with function. Let's do funnel. Well, funnel has a, let's do bucket eight or nine. So see how we can make objects that have a different amount of outlets and inlets. The message objects will always have two inlets and one outlet. So the message object is, it's almost like your envelope that the message is carried in. Um, so it sends its contained information to objects, unlike object box, always has two inlets and one outlet. Remember, inlets are always on top, outlets are on bottom. So how do we get this information out of the message object? So let's lock our patch. I'm going to do command click. And just to show, if you, in performance mode, click on a message, look at that. You press down. It's actually doing something. So you're sending it out the outlet. Uh, unlike normal objects, when you click, it doesn't do anything. So it does something. So the thing is, is these outlets aren't hooked up to anything. So that's one thing we need to know. What's the next thing? Bang! All right, let's get this. Bang! Had to do it. All right, so what's a bang? A bang is one of the most basic commands in Max MSP. What it does most of the time is it either tells an object, do your thing, or send out your values. So if we take a message box, let's take our radical, and then if you double click on it, retype bang, shift enter. Now we have a bang. So um, let's connect the outlet of this message to the inlet of, well, yeah, before we do this. So if you connect uh, this outlet to the left inlet of a message, you'll see that when we put it in performance mode and click, it doesn't send the message into there. Uh, but if we connect it to the right inlet and then put in performance mode, it will send whatever message container or whatever content or message is inside the, whatever information is inside the message object and it will replace the information inside that message object. So let's connect this message to the left inlet of random. And then we put in performance mode and press bang. But again, we're almost there, but we're, we're not getting any random numbers because where are they going? They have no outlet. So let's take this message and then connect the random to the right inlet of the message box. Look at that. We finally got some random goodness. So notice how it's going from zero to nine, and there is no 10 because it's one less than what we specified. Create another message box, connect the outlet of the random object, lock and click the bang message, cool. So this right inlet of message, uh, the message object is a great way to check values. However, it is not the best way. So what is the best way? Another better way to check values is to use the print object. So if we press N, go to print, print any message in the max window. Here, let me see if there's a, print will print any input into the max window for debugging, messaging, or analysis purposes. So if we press enter, then we create this little object and it only has one inlet. So you'll notice that print doesn't output uh, things through any outlets. It only has one inlet. So it sends information to the max window. What's the max window? Well, let's lock our patch and then double click. There's four different ways to open the max window. One way is to double click on the print object while it's in performance mode. 
And look at that, we have our max window. And if you'll notice, there's already two things in our max window from my earlier session. That's because I tried to create an object called football, but it doesn't exist. So the max window warns you of that. Uh, also, I accidentally typed in mes, mes instead of message. So it also said that there's no such object. So this is the max window. And let's see, what's another way to get access to the max window? Another way is if you press Command M right there. So normally Command M is minimized, but in Max MSP, it pulls up the max window. If you go to Window and then go to Max Window, which is what that Command M does. And then the fourth way of doing it is if you open the sidebar. So we opened the sidebar before, and look, you got your Object Explorer. But then another thing is if you go all the way to the right, you have Max, and there's your Max window attached to the side of your screen. So let's connect the random outlet. Let's connect the random object's outlet to the print object. And then see what happens. When we press bang, look at five, three, so you see over here, Ooh. one, seven, so on. So it keeps a log of all the previous numbers. Meanwhile, if you're using a message, it just gets rewritten, and then you don't know what happened. So, so an, uh, two more things to know about this max window is that if you look at these bottom options, I'm going to go over two of them. One is clear all, where if you click it, look at that, it refreshes it. So now every new object or new information you get sent starts from the top. So we could clear it. Um, and the second thing is if you select any message, then you press show object. Look at that. It highlights which print object sent that message. So right there. So if we have multiple print objects, then we can uh, we can see which print is sending that. So you'll see that right now it says object print. Well, if we go to print, if we type in print, press the space bar, we have the arguments here. So we have one argument, and it says identifier anything. Uh, I'm going to have to move this so that we can actually read that. So. What is this argument? And remember, an argument is something we type after the object name that further specifies how this object will function. So the argument is an identifier for the print object. Uh, each message printed in the max window is preceded by the name of the print object, which you can see as print in this max window. Uh, the name can be either a number or a word. If there is no argument, the name of the print object is print. So since we didn't put an argument in that first print object, that's why it showed up as print. Using an argument to print can help distinguish uh, the output of two or more print objects. So let's name this print object boogie woogie. And then let's name this object football. So and then I'm going to create, I'm going to copy, so I've just selected and command C and then command V. I'm going to copy another random and I'm going to connect the bang out to a different random object. Let's get, get rid of this groovy. And then, let, so we have two print objects now, one called football, one called boogie woogie. So if we press bang, look at that we see that we have this random, which was hooked up to Boogie Woogie, outputted the random number of nine. And then this random, which is hooked up to football, put out the random number of three. So, and then if we go to this, we could press show object and it will show specifically that. And I wonder, so if we just kept it without any name, what would happen is, Look at there's two different prints, but like, oh no, well which one's which? Well you can still press this. Oh, so zero was output through that left side. So even if they have the same names, you can use this show object 
to see which one is getting that value. Cool, cool. What else? So why is print better than using this right inlet of the message box? So you might be able to tell already because it's a log, but to showcase the answer to this, Uzi. Okay, I, I have to. What's an Uzi? That's an Uzi. So what do you think an Uzi does if it's a gun that shoots like that? An Uzi is an object that sends a series of bangs one after another. How appropriate. So let me move these things up here more. So let's practice using the Uzi object. So if we type N U Z, there it is. Send many bang messages. Okay, and let's move this over here so we can read what it says. Outputs a specified number of bang messages quickly. Uzi is designed for rapid fire output of a large number of bang messages. So you see what they did there. So if you press space, you see that we have two different arguments. Sets an initial, initial, sets an initial number of bang messages to be sent out in response to a bang in the left in inlet. If no argument is present, Uzi is initially set to send out one bang, which is kind of not worth it if you're only going to use the Uzi to send one bang. So, but we're not, and it has a section, second argument, this second optional argument, but we're not going to worry about that. So, uh, so let's make this Uzi, let's make it 10, which means if we send it one bang, so if you hover over the inlet, notice it says start shooting bangs. So if we send it a bang, it will start shooting bangs. So I'm going to hold option and then highlight these two patch cords, get rid of them. And then I'm going to drag this outlet of this one bang into the Uzi. And then I'm just going to use one of these. Um, here, actually, I'll use this one. So let and we'll just keep it named print. So what happens when we I'll clear all here? Uh, so what happens when we press this bang? Bam! Look at that. It outputs ten bangs in a row, which gives us ten random numbers in a row. This is one reason why the print is so much better than the message for debugging. Because if you try and watch the message and see if you could get, if you could, you could uh, see the 10 different numbers that it picks up. No, it's literally instantaneous. So it looks like it went from eight to three, but really what happened is it went from eight to three to eight to three to two to five to five to seven to zero to one to three. So the print option is, uh, the print object is very useful for checking things like that. So one last thing, uh, when we read the um, description of the message object, message, it says that it has the com capability to handle specified arguments. So what that means is that 10 is an argument, for Uzi. Uzi is the object, 10 is the argument for it that specifies further its function. 10 is the argument for random. We can send a value into uh, these objects to change the argument. So it's at 10 right now. It picks a number 0 through 9 and this sends out 10 bangs. But if we hover over the right inlets we see set the random number range. So if we send a number into this right side, it will set the random number range. And if we send a, how many bangs to shoot? If we send another number into this, it will change the how many bangs to shoot. So let's make a message that says 20 and then shift enter. And now let's hold shift, click once on the outlet. And then look at that, you don't have to hold on the uh, mouse anymore. And then hold shift and then click on the right uh, inlet, there you go, and then hold shift and click on the right inlet, there you go, and then we could just click uh, the escape key to get rid of that. So now, let's put it into performance mode, 
and let's clear our max window. Go back here. So what do you think is going to happen if I press this message? It looks like nothing happened. But that's how Max works with arguments. Right now, this is set to Uzi 20. And this is set to random 20. However, it doesn't overwrite the initial argument we had written. But it is set to 20. And how can we prove it? Well, if we press the bang, look at that. It goes 11, 14, 11, 13, 19. So it's sending out 20 bangs and it's sending out, uh, choo choosing between 0 and 19 now because we set it to 20. So, yeah. That is all that I had for this video. Uh, and I look forward to helping you out in the next one.